Let's talk about the prostate gland and natural ways to address risk for prostate disease, like benign prostatic hypertrophy, BPH, prostatitis, inflammation and or infection of the prostate gland, and of course, prostate cancer. Most conversations involving natural methods involve herbs like salt palmetto that may reduce, for instance, the blockage of urine that passes through the uh, prostate gland, but there's not a whole lot else beyond that. Understandably, a lot of the science behind studying the prostate is difficult because it involves putting an instrument into the rectum and then using a needle to biopsy the prostate <clears throat> and examine what, what you find. And in, in particular, the microbiome of the prostate has been neglected until the last few years. And so examination of the microbiome of the prostate has unearthed, has uncovered some very unique findings that were completely unexpected. You know, for years, uh, we relied on such things as the urine to uh, determine what was going on in the prostate. Well, the urine is an imperfect reflection of what goes in the prostate. The urinary bladder and then the urethra, that's the little tube that passes right through the prostate gland to convey urine to the outside. So urine is closely uh, allied to what goes on in the prostate gland, just within a millimeter or two. Likewise, the rectum. You know, how, do you, how does a, a doctor, for instance, examine the prostate? A finger in the rectum. So the rectum is right there next to the prostate within a couple of millimeters. So the, you would guess that the rectal microbiome and the urinary microbiome play big roles in the prostate microbiome. And that is true, though they're imperfect reflections of what goes in the prostate. And there seems to be a lot more going on in very unexpected ways. So the recent use of DNA sequencing, sequencing has uncovered a whole array of microbes that live in the prostate in men with prostatitis, BPH, and prostate cancer that are completely unexpected. For instance, you can find oral microbes in the prostate, like Porphyromonas gingivalis, which is a common pathogen. You can find stomach microbes in the prostate, like Helicobacter pylori. You can find skin microbes in the prostate, like Cutibacterium, that causes acne. You can find, of course, rectal and urinary microbes in the prostate gland. You can even find microbes ordinarily found in the vagina in the prostate. Presumably, they are via intercourse with your female partner. In other words, the prostate gland seems to be this, what I call the grand central station of, my, of the microbiome. The prostate seems to be an area that receives the microbes from numerous sources, skin, mouth, vagina, urine, rectum, and the majority of men who have prostate issues like prostatitis, BPH, prostate cancer, also have SIBO. That is the effects of endotoxemia that originate in the small intestine. Who would have thought? Why? Because it's the rectum that's right next to the prostate, not the small intestine. But the small intestine affects other parts of the body via the uh, release of endotoxin, right? So recall that in the majority of Americans, including men, uh, about half the population has allowed the overproliferation of fecal microbes in the colon, that then have been allowed to ascend into the 24 feet of small intestine. The small intestine becomes inflamed by housing these fecal microbes, and microbes only live for a few hours, and when they die, they release their toxic components, specifically endotoxin, that enters the bloodstream, and that leads to weight gain in the abdomen, leads to type 2 diabetes, insulin resistance, coronary disease, atrial fibrillation, rosacea, psoriasis, dementia. <laughs> in other words, Virtually all the common diseases of modern people, either initiating them or making them worse. So there's other factors, of course, that are involved in those conditions. But endotoxemia is a miserably neglected area that plays a big role. And in prostate disease, the majority of men with prostate disease also have SIBO with endotoxemia driving prostate uh, disease. So how in the world do you address all this? Well, the answers are not yet clear, but it becomes, I think it's clear that there's no one solution. It's to address the body-wide microbiome. So for instance, uh, address the rectal microbiome and SIBO. Well, that we can do, right? You can use, for instance, my SIBO yogurt, what I call SIBO yogurt, the combination of lactobacillus roteri, lactobacillus gasseri, and the optional bacillus coagulans, or bacillus subtilis, we ferment it as yogurt, 
uh, and we consume it, and that has been has proven to be exceptionally effective in eradicating SIBO and rectal dysbiosis by consuming it for a minimum of four weeks and more likely for a lifetime, at least intermittently. Address the oral microbiome. You start by eliminating wheat because the amylopectin A of wheat and other grains is metabolized in the mouth and disrupts the oral microbiome. That science is quite clear. Sugars likewise. Oral hygiene, of course. If you have H. pylori by stool testing, eradicate H. pylori. And you can do so, by the way, using natural methods. If you don't know how to do that, see my drdavisinfinitehealth.com uh, inner circle. And you'll see multiple protocols, multiple agents to choose from that have been uh, very uh, effective in eradicating H. pylori. The skin, we address the skin microbiome indirectly. You don't have to apply topical probiotics, but you want to acidify the skin. And you do that, you accomplish that by consuming fermented foods like sauerkraut, kimchi, kefirs, uh, and prebiotic fibers, fibers that nourish microbes, because both, the, both those things acidify the skin. And acidification of the skin discourages the proliferation of pathogens like Staphylococcus aureus and Cutobacterium that goes to the prostate and encourages the proliferation of healthy microbes like Staphylococcus epidermidis. So in other words, it, it's what I call a holobiome approach that is addressing all the micro, uh, microbiomes of the body in order to gain control of the prostate. So there's not a specific prostate strategy. It's a holobiome approach that I believe we're going to find out as the science emerges. We need better science, of course. It's going to proceed slowly because of that issue I mentioned in the beginning, that is, it requires insertion of a device into the rectum and a needle biopsy of the prostate. So <laughs> this is not often done. But I believe it's, the, the science will point us towards the idea that it's not something specifically we do in the prostate gland itself, but addressing the entire microbiome of the body that will result in a reduction in the risk for prostate disease. Now, if you learned something from this YouTube video, I encourage you to join my conversations in my, uh, here, my YouTube channel, of course, my Defiant Health podcast, my books, especially the Super Gut book that details a lot of these ideas regarding the microbiome, and of course, my two-way membership site, which is the uh, innercircle.drdavisinfinitehealth.com. We have two-way Zoom conversations and hundreds of videos and conversations that discuss these kinds of topics in detail.